Welcome back, gang. It's Deltia from DeltiasGaming.com with what I think is the best, easiest build in Hogwarts Legacy. You can use this right away. It absolutely nukes everything. It's not complex, and you do not have to get the OP Dark Art skills. So if you do not want to be Voldemort's best buddy and use all the Dark Art skills, this is for you, and you can be super overpowered. The footage you're watching is various trolls at level 30 and beyond in the Dark Arts arena with the other arenas. I've tested it. It's proven. Let me show you how to do it. So this build is called the Herbologist, and as you can imagine, it's based on consumables. Consumables, specifically the plants that you earn very early on in the game, are absolutely filthy, disgusting, powerful, especially with two perks early on. The first one up that we're going to talk about is Chinese Chomping Cabbage. You get this quite early, and you can purchase the seeds at Dogwood and Death Cap. It doesn't seem like it does a whole lot. You can chuck three of them out at a time, and it can be grown in medium our large pots in your room of requirement. Now, what makes these very, very strong is a talent in the room of requirement tree. One thing I know about talents is you get them at level five after completing a main story quest. I was actually a level 10 by getting this talents unlocked. Also, when you pick them, you cannot take them back. So make sure you pick the right one. So you're going to start earning one at five and you have a max level of 40. So at level five, you get a bunch of ones that you can pick from. Fertilizer is a number one. For each Chinese chomping cabbage thrown, a second chomping cabbage is generated and released at no cost. So essentially, you can throw three of them and get a max of six of them damaging targets at the same time. Now, these things will do an enormous damage with the specific trait that we're going to use. If you're unfamiliar with traits, after doing some of the main story, you're going to get access to the this loom here, okay? When you mouse over, it's going to show you view upgrades and view traits. We're going to go to view traits. How you get some of these is discovering them and through the quest, but also bandit outpost. So if you go to these bandit outposts, small, medium, whatever size, you have to clear a bunch of uh, bad guys. And then once you get that done, there's going to be a chest at the end that you open for an RNG chance to get one of these items. You can just save right before, hit load, and keep cycling through to get the exact one that you want. Since this is Herbologist, you can guess which ones we're going to go with. And that is Herbology number three. These come in number one, two, and three. Three is the end game. This does the most damage. It significantly increases damage by all plants. So Chinese comp chomping cabbage and another one we're going to get to in a little bit. The thing to know about these traits and the herbology is it's multiplicative. Meaning if you have them on all of your specific armor slots, it gets more powerful exponentially. It's not diminishing returns. It's the exact opposite. So you want to stack them as much as you can to make the cabbage and also the venomous tentacula do an absolute astronomical damage and also it stuns so you don't even have to do much but chuck a couple cabbages on the ground do a bunch of dodge rolls and let it get to work so that's the trait again you get it at the loom and you can manipulate these early on you can get one two and three room of requirement comes pretty early on in the game and level five is that first talent that we're going to get access to now the second part of the herbologist that makes you absolutely god mode and it's super overpowered this potion makes you invulnerable if you have this talent and deflects projectiles so as you can see where the combination is going you can just chuck this potion throw down three cabbages or even one and you can't get hit and die at all and plus range just nukes themselves and these two talents are at level five early on in the game you can get this it is dependent this build is quite dependent on resources so you're going to be spending a lot of time in your room of requirement but once you start getting some gold your best source of uh, building up is your tomes and scrolls this thing is going to sell you a bunch of different recipes that allow you to optimize your herbology and potions early on so primarily focus on the tomes and scrolls and getting those recipes to grow more and more plants to make them more and more frequent and do a lot of damage just passively now some other talents you're going to want to have invested the core talents are really fantastic no matter which ones you go with so spell knowledge is quite useful because you get an extra bar so you can use something for damage you can use something for shield breaking you can use something for utility and you can get that three times to have four different bars also you're going to want the wig and weld potency which is going to allow you to heal and there's two of those that you can get access to one at level five and one level 16. what i highly recommend is swift holding down dodge allows you to vanish and quickly reappear nearby because with this potion build primarily you're not going to be using spells if you don't want to but you can you're going to be dodging a lot and zipping around the area so that 
way you can put down your cabbage and your other stuff because it does so much damage for you. However, there is kind of a brief little animation with the cabbage. Thus, when you chuck it out, you're very, very vulnerable. So you're going to be doing a dodge slash holding this, zoom around around the corner, chuck down some cabbages, and get back to action. Now, another part of this build is based on another consumable, and that is Venomous Tentacula. This is going to do a lot of damage, purchase that dogweed and death cap, and must be grown in large pots, not medium, as where you can get the seeds and start planting these and grow them on your own. You're going to shoot this out. It's going to shoot acid at nearby targets, and you can stack both of them. So you can throw Venomous Tentacula and you can throw three Chinese Comping Chomping Cabbage. And when you sit there and chuck them, assuming that you have this potion here all the way up, you're not going to take damage for 20 seconds. So you're super invulnerable. You sit down there and chuck all your cabbage. Once the invulnerability runs off, you just do some dodges and you're absolutely melting everything. Again, you need to basically spec into room requirements so you can get these quite often or buy them when you have a chance. There's a talent that makes them even more powerful, and you guessed it, it's in the room of requirement here, and that is Noxious. Venomous Tentacula attacks, deal additional damage, and break shields. So your Cabbage stuns, does tons of damage. Your Venomous Tentacula, well, it breaks shields, and you really don't have to do a whole lot, which is fantastic for us. So that is absolutely incredible. This does come a little bit later, so you're going to be need to be a level 22, so this is more of an end game perk. And then you're going to have another one called Thunder Brew Potency that if you want the full effect, you can do this as well. It basically casts a huge thunder cloud on top of you and does enormous amount of damage. This also stuns targets as well. So I kind of alternate be be between Venomous Tentacula and then the Thunder Brew to take care of shields passively. Okay, so what other talents and perks do you want to get a hold of? Well, you got a bunch of different spells and they're really fantastic. The bread and butter combination for spell a little bit mid-tier later in to the game is Glacius. Striking an enemy frozen by Glacius deals damage outward. This Glacius mastery makes it AoE. But what Glacius does is a massive debuff to targets, making them take an enormous amount more damage. And then you combine that with Defendo in Defendo Mastery, which slices through targets. And this is the highest single target damage spell in the game, but also now it can be AoE. So you prep them with the debuff, you hit them with Defendo Mastery, and boom, it does an enormous amount of damage. When I actually take the Defendo uh, trait and I ramp it up, I'm getting 12,000 non-crits on a troll. You can literally one-shot troll if you spec into that, but that's another build for another day. Also, something else that's quite useful is the Accio Mastery. The reason why it's very, very early, but it makes it AoE. So these arenas that you're constantly going to be facing and or huge fights later on in the game, there's a lot of massive mobs, especially playing hard mode. The footage I'm showing you is the hardest difficulty possible. So you're going to be overwhelmed with tons and tons of enemies and you want to pull them in, especially if you're using potions and you're using the consumables. It'll put them in a nice, tight AoE spot that absolutely blasts them. So this is how my bar loadout looks. I have four of the bars on this one, and my number one primary bar is a Glacius over here, and then I have Defendo. I do another combination where I do Leviosa and then do Descendo. So I lift them up, smack them down. And then I have a couple of different tricks that I use on my second bar. I use Accio a lot of times with Incendo. So I pull in multiple targets and use this massive AoE. Incendo is great because it's early on. You can get the perk that makes it does more damage in the AoE area. But also, you can suck them in, do a bunch of damage, and you guessed it, bring them to closer to your cabbage. And so primarily, I use this, this top bar uh, almost the entire time. You don't even really need to respec or change bars. Expelliarmus, Incendo, Accio, and then Bombardia, which you get quite later in the game but do not sleep on the basic spells also another good alternative is confringo this you also can basically get another perk in here to do aoe so your spells a lot of times when you're starting this game out are single target only that's really good for boss fights not good for 90 percent of the other encounters so you're going to want to take perks to optimize and fill those up Last things to polish up on the builds talent wise that are going to make you very, very strong. Do not sleep on any of the core talents. I don't mess with spell stealth on this particular build, but what I do is a lot of dodge rolls. I use that swift uh, predominantly. So this is the talent I go with level five. It's one of my favorite talents in the game. 
I also have a utility one with this guy here. And this evasion absorption, successfully evading an unblockable attack with dodge contributes to ancient magic. Ancient magic is basically a literal one shot. So you're going to want to primarily focus on that. And a lot of times I save up that for an ogre or something single target that's very, very heavy. I would not recommend using your ancient magic for a non-boss or elite or something else. Just in case you're unaware and new to the game, you can actually rank up your ancient magic. But if you go into the world map and you look for these little things here, ancient magic hotspot, there's a bunch around. So you can have to actually optimize your build even further and have a bunch of ancient magic bars. Save up for a huge boss fight and just spam that puppy with your cabbages out. Everything will die. So if you wanted to play this build, what I would do is focus on the main story quest. Know that there's not a new game plus, but you can beat the main story with zero impact on your gameplay. So I would highly recommend completing the main story and doing side quests to pro, uh, basically get that main story as far along as you can. Reason why it's going to unlock the room of requirement. It's going to unlock um, a bunch of other things they're going to add to your build because you're going to need beast teaming you're going to need room of requirement you're going to need some gold to kind of start building up your herbology and your potion making system and you're also going to need to explore a little bit and go work on the bandit camps so just kind of go around explore you can cheese it or do it organically on the bandit camps by just finding them clearing them out and then also getting the specific one you want herbology is my favorite because you can use both um, of the plants and do very, very good damage with either of them. So that's it for a quick build about the Herbologist. I'll be doing some more. I figured I'd get this out. I didn't know it was that staggeringly powerful, but the consumables are a lot of fun. I felt like this was kind of similar to The Witcher, where they were going to make plants and potions extraordinarily strong for the people that don't want to use spells. And let's be honest, Professor Garlic is one of the best NPCs in the game. So pick this up. Start working on those uh, consumables, and if you like something else, you can always augment your build and keep a few along with you and just absolutely dominate in a pinch when you need to. I'll be cranking out more uh, builds for Hogwarts Legacy on my website, deltiasgaming.com, link in the description below if you want guides for that. We have walkthroughs, talents, spells, everything you need to know about the game and more. And last shout out, I promise, if you got something out of this video, like and subscribe, I appreciate it. And okay, that wasn't actually the last shout out, twitch.tv slash deltiasgaming. Gaming where my mom claims the best streamer alive. Thanks for watching.